Hey, welcome to this video on long exposure at sunset. In the rain, in the wind, in low light, in all kinds of horrible conditions, it's blowing an absolute gale out here and it makes taking photos really tricky. First of all, the camera on the tripod is really easy to blow over. You've got to hold onto that while you're taking a photo. Secondly, just composing and finding a good shot where your camera's not going to get splashed with water is difficult. Third, I need to get stuff out of my bag. I need to get a tripod accessories and filters and all kinds of stuff out. It's a tricky process. I'm going to show you my best tips on how to capture beautiful long exposures in adverse weather conditions. It is really starting to come in now. So we're about 30 minutes away from sunset. If I was doing landscape photography, I would have been here a little bit earlier. I would be out trying to take photos in the beautiful one hour before the sun sets, which is the golden hour, and it's taking a little bit afterwards. But because I'm doing long exposure photography, the best results are going to happen just after the sun set. Right now, I'm not using a filter on my lens, and the reason for that is because we're starting to lose more and more light. Look how dark these clouds are. As the light gets dimmer, there's less of a need to use a filter, and it also means I can switch to my 14 millimeter, which I can't mount filters onto. So we're gonna have a bit of experimentation. Apologies to the videographers, I'm gonna probably run around a little bit in this area here. And yeah, we'll probably get a little bit soaked too, because it's coming in pretty hard over here. Because I'm not gonna use filters for this, I'm gonna rely just on my aperture of my lens here. So I have an aperture of 22, ISO of 100, and in these conditions, if I don't get blown over and the lens doesn't get too wet, these conditions I'm looking at 1 13th of a second. Not exactly a long exposure, but over the next few minutes as the sun sets, the next 30 minutes or so, oh, we're going to get some really cool blurs. I might try just before it goes by putting a filter on and seeing what I can get in just a moment. But just note that if you don't have filters on you, you can still do long exposure towards sunset. Just check, set your aperture to as narrow as it will go. In this case, I'm going to f22. You can get even further, smaller apertures than f22. So check which apertures your lenses go to. For example, my 50mm 1.2 only goes to 16. Not much use in this situation. I'd rather use my 24 to 70. All right, it's exciting times. Let's get started with some shooting. These waves are really, really moving out here. I need to stand around. <laughs> I need to stand around my camera without it blowing over. So I can still see it. Oh, wow. Hang on. Let's take the bag off my back. And I'm keeping my lens cap on when I'm not shooting because the mist that comes off those waves is unbelievable. My whole glasses are being fogged up here. I'm intentionally overexposing my photograph a little bit here, so I'm going to do a quarter of a second and I overexpose it a little bit more. It's easy to bring that back later. There's so much dark in the scene that that's not going to be an issue. And that way I can get some motion blur on these waves crashing into the beach. And I'm hoping, or I was hoping rather, that we'd get some really pink clouds. It seems to be more of a storm cloud now, so I think the likelihood of that is not very high. But we'll see what happens in 30 minutes. As always, I'm focused at infinity and I'm using an intervalometer to take the photos and that's allowing me to take as many photos as I want in a high speed shooting mode to capture all of this motion blur. These waves are going to crash at different times. These clouds are moving very fast. So usually clouds don't move this fast, but it's so windy here that they're moving really fast across the scene. So even at just a couple seconds, I'll catch some motion blur in these clouds. Unfortunately, right now, they're only breaking up as they reach land over here, whereas over here, they're still quite dark. The texture that you want to capture in a couple of seconds will come from these fluffy shaped ones over here. You can see the texture and you can see the shape as they move. A blur of gray is going to look like a blur of gray in a long exposure or not. Now, famous last words. I'm going to get a little bit closer. If you don't already own waterproof boots, I highly recommend them. Okay, not loving the composition. I'm going to go a little bit further over there. You can come one day and it's calm clouds, and the next day it's amazing, tumultuous weather like this. And this is where you start to get the real best shots. Anyone can take photos on a bright and sunny day. It's this sort of weather that really separates you. Yeah, this is where having a 14 millimeter really starts to help. Uh. 
<laughs> Starting to adjust the composition a little bit as the clouds start to clear up over here. We now have just 10 minutes until the sun sets. I'm getting pretty wet here. The rain's coming in, the wind's coming in, the sea's coming in. But it is a lot of fun. Trust me, it's a lot of fun. In the next 10 minutes, as the sun sets, what we can expect is these clouds, hopefully they would have broken up, that would be perfect. These clouds, as they break up, are gonna start changing color and hopefully they'll turn pink. Pink is the gold standard of sunsets, is what we're looking for here. And to get pink clouds, what you need is to have clouds that are open enough for the sun to hit them once it's gone past the horizon. If it's one big wall of brown cloud, or gray cloud rather, you're not gonna see pink in there at all. Pink and orange is what we're looking for. That usually happens 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the sun sets. We've still got another 25 minutes or so. Woo, woo. Bit of foam coming past me there. But I think the results we're gonna get are really, really good. I will say though, my lens is getting soaked. My camera is getting soaked. If you do not have a proper weather sealed camera, you might not want to try this with your gear. But I personally feel like it's better to have fun with your gear, see what happens. If you break it, you break it, but at least you used it. I got so many knocks and scratches on this thing, but, but it's because I use it, I have great fun and I take awesome photos. Well, awesome for me at least. I'm really happy with them. So the sun's setting in a minute, we'll take some more photos. With the 14 millimeter, I'm getting a really wide view of the bay to the sun coming in on the left third or just about the left third line and it's illuminating that part of the frame. The sun has started to lose quite a bit of its power now as it's working its way through this mist and these clouds of water that's being sprayed up by the ocean. So we'll see what happens here, but so far so good. Let's move one more time. There we go, that's a cool shot. Hopefully we'll get some water spray coming here and we'll get the clouds as they change color. So now I'm prioritizing the clouds more than I am the foreground. In fact, I don't want too much splash in the foreground, otherwise it's gonna to be totally white. That's not that interesting. I wanna see some of these rocks. Because of waves are breaking, we start to see really uh, just a whitewash on this shore. So we want to get it either coming in fast or pulling out. Now that sun is setting and it's getting dimmer before it even reaches the horizon, which is making me think it might be a little bit too dark to capture these clouds and change their color. I might be able to do something creative later on in Lightroom or Photoshop, but for right now, I'm not too sure if we'll get the pink clouds, maybe some orange. Um, we're gonna hang out though until after it's set, which is another five minutes until sunset. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Add a bit of contrast back into the clouds because obviously we're shooting in raw here. We're not getting that contrast that you get from a JPEG. So that right there is an example of too much water. We've got too much of the white stuff coming in. Oh, now I'm wet. Whew. Okay. Yeah, that is one wet G. <laughs> it's tempting to run away from the camera when the tide's coming, but I would much rather hang on to this and make sure it doesn't get wet than to uh, avoid my ankles getting a bit soggy. All right, the sun's now set. It's waiting sea time to see what happens to these clouds. I think they'll at least add a bit more depth to their color, some more contrast between the light areas and the dark areas. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens there while still getting some of this in the foreground. We can also experiment with a slightly longer exposure time. So we've been shooting at one second. Maybe we can see what two seconds does. I think it's gonna to be too much here though, to be honest, because looking at this, it is coming in fast. You can see just how fast these clouds are moving. I think now, if I go back and take a photo at two seconds, I'm gonna to start to see, oh, let's adjust this one. I'm gonna see some motion blur in the clouds, which would be cool to see, because they have broken up quite a bit. Yeah, there's some motion blur there. I will just see. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh, there it is. There it is, that's the good stuff. Bit of, oh, actually my feet are still dry. I bought some waterproof shoes before I came on this trip and they are paying off big time. I think I'll reduce that shutter speed to maybe 1.3 seconds. Two seconds was a bit long, getting too much in the foreground. Fingers crossed for some colorful clouds. 
What I like here is that the water is coming in towards the bottom right of the frame and the clouds are moving to, to the top left. So you've got this dynamic tension of directions in which, they're di in which they're going. The splash seems to have reduced a little bit, but I might be uh, eating my words in a minute. I'm just making final adjustments to my composition and in this scene, the clouds is about as interesting as the, as the ground is. So it, it's a natural feeling to want to put the horizon right in the middle of the frame so you can get clouds and you can get the foreground. The problem with that though is with the horizon, you end up having a line across the middle of your scene and it's like two photographs. It cuts the frame in half. So always go for a 60-40 split over a 50-50. It just makes the composition much more balanced and pleasing to the eye. Make a decision which one's more interesting. I'm waiting for the water to be pulled out and then blown back in again for the best results. So maybe this next big wave. You see the water's all gone down now. Yeah, that's cool because we get some real wave moving down here. Yeah, that's it. We just got done shooting in these adverse weather conditions. We're dealing with wind, we're dealing with rain, clouds, sea, everything you can imagine that's been thrown at us here. And I have to say, it's some of the most fun I have shooting. I think you can see how much fun I'm having out there. We're filming a little bit later than we thought, which is why I'm using my iPhone as a video light. And I just want to say that two things. One, make sure you've got weather weather sealed gear and you're properly dressed uh, waterproof shoes go a long way two make sure that if you are not using weather sealed gear so my camera's weather sealed my 24 to 70 is weather sealed but my rocket on 14 millimeter is not i know i'm going to be very careful when i take that off and make sure i dry everything before i pack my camera away so just bear that in mind and finally i know it doesn't seem like a lot of fun to get out of a nice warm living room and get wet weather gear on and go shoot in the cold, the rain, the dark, whatever weather conditions you don't want to be in. But I have to say, it's the most fun and you get some of the most spectacular results. I've had a lot of fun shooting here and I think the results speak for themselves. So thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them below. Thanks for watching.